My favorite meal was the adobo chicken thighs. Oh, David, you Two you orders. got three servings. <laughs> ah, you're a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> people always seem to ask this question year after year. Why are Filipino people so popular, but the food isn't? Today, Andrew, we are analyzing an article by The Gothamist asking why isn't Filipino food more popular in America? It's been endorsed by Anthony Bourdain, Andrew Zimmerman, but it seems like it still hasn't turned a corner in terms of like cuisine popularity. Now, Andrew, why would two Chinese Americans be asking this question? All right. Yeah, because also it's actually part of our channel to explore culture. You know, that's what we always do. We grew up around a lot of Filipino friends. We had Filipino food growing up. I've probably eaten at what, maybe 30 different Filipino restaurants in our life. So I'm not a Filipino food expert. However, I am curious and we do want to help in uh, give any sort of type of suggestions that we can to maybe help make uh, Filipino food more popular or help spark some minds? I don't know. I actually think that there will be a major fast casual Filipino chain anywhere from like 20 to 100 fast casual stores that opens up within the next five years. I have my recommendations. What do I know? I don't really know, but you know, I just thought I'd give my recommendations. I just took a look at the article. Andrew, when I was in college, my favorite meal in the entire UW experience was the adobo chicken thighs at By George Cafe. Oh, David, you're coming back for the adobo, yeah, I yeah. see. I always ah, got two, you, two orders. You got three servings. <laughs> ah, you're a big boy. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, I was also going to say that Jollibee's is one of my absolute favorite fast food chains in the world. And they're yes. mostly cooking American food. They only have a few Filipino dishes on the menu, but still Filipino. And Max's Restaurant is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, mid-end fast food chain in the world. Dude, I mean, garlic rice is a better version of rice. Uh, arroz con, uh, not arroz con pollo, uh, 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 was it? Arroz caldo. Arroz caldo is a better kanji, okay? You, lumpia is a better egg roll. I mean, I think there are Filipino dishes that clearly shine above the rest. And not only that, they got their own dishes too, Andrew, sinigang. Uh, halo halo lechon there's so many different things and you know what the interesting thing about the philippines is andrew it's this mixture of like the original people which kind of has some in commonality with indonesia there's a lot of influence from spain there's a lot of influence in the cuisine from china as well as the pacific islands and it's this crazy mix of those things and different islands might even have like a different ratio distribution so everybody's got their own recipes for cooking dishes but i guess that's one of the complexities about filipino food is there's not a standardized way to even cook like chicken adobo all right so real quick, I'm going to go through some of the reasons that people have listed on why Filipino food is not as popular as it could be. Um, and some of these are pulled off the internet. Some of these are coming from Filipino chefs and restaurant owners themselves. So I didn't make these all up, all right? Number one, Andrew, it doesn't fall into the decadent high-class vibe like French or Japanese, but it also doesn't seem like a everyday lunch fuel up power food. There, shout out to Mighty Bowls in New York City that is trying to make Filipino influence food a bowl and, and power food. But I mean, I think a lot of cuisines suffer from this. Like Mexican food really struggled to break those upper echelons. Even Chinese food in America, only the past 10 years, really started breaking into that $3 sign, $4 sign spot. Like people viewed it as like cheap, I just need to eat sustenance food, but it was tasty. Number two, Andrew, <clears throat> it is not particularly spicy. Um, for example, like Sichuan food, Thai food, Korean food, but it's not particularly fresh with the leaves like Viet or Thai food. I guess it's existing in a middle zone. Actually, I would mostly compare it in temperature and texture, Andrew, to some deeper cut Cantonese dishes. Yeah, I do think Filipinos could even create more like Filipino salads because I know like Viet and, and uh, Viet and Thai food are essentially like half of those dishes are like eating salads. Um, number three, Andrew, this is not my words. We just pulled this off subreddit and, you know, quoting some chefs. It doesn't look particularly good on the outside just due to the stews and sort of like the visual presentation. I don't necessarily agree with this, but I read this point a lot on different subreddits and quarters. All right, the next point is that Filipino food is oftentimes seen as a very homestyle food. So your Lola will make it better than the restaurant. And you know, if you grow up with your Lola's food and the, her way of cooking, then obviously you're gonna prefer that and that's gonna deter you from you know paying more at a Filipino restaurant. So that's what I've heard from some restaurant owners. And the next point was just that it's a global marketing issue. Andrew, here is a global chart um, viewing like every country, viewing everybody else's food. And this is just like people's perception. This is not the reality of what's tasty or not. Because for example, Peruvians way low on there, Filipinos way low on there, Argentinian Caribbean is low on there. And those all 
got some absolute 10 out of 10 bangers. Just think about it this way. There are 272 million Indonesians worldwide. Indonesian food is considered very good and it's still not that popular in America and it has really yet to break through. So, I mean, you know, it happens to other tasty cuisines too. And not only that, I think that a lot of like cuisines in America, they have different levels of penetration. For example, in New York, Mexican food recently had a huge resurgence or not resurgence, but a huge just renaissance in 10 years, but it's mostly tacos. For example, in LA and Portland, Andrew, they love Thai boat noodles. In New York, they love Pad Thai, and there's so many Thai restaurants opening in New York City, but they're not on Thai boat noodles because of the use of the pig's blood. You know, I don't even think a lot of people in New York eat pork for a variety of reasons. Yeah, so let's move on to some suggestions. We did like a little quick brainstorm on like what might help Filipino food reach that, that next and level. I mean, these are just things we're coming up with. Let us know if you like any of the ideas. Not saying that we are experts, but I'm just saying, guys, if you guys open up a fast casual chain serving adobo and lumpia let me take a look at the investor deck you, after these recommendations you can't go wrong with chicken and rice man you can't go wrong number one andrew that leads us to our first point recommendation i guess is focus on the universally loved dishes i know chefs they get attached to the creativity and the deep cut stuff that their great grandma made or the grandma made but you know even chinese food we got to recognize andrew for cantonese food even though it's so beloved people just like one ton soup and they just like the shiu yolk you know the roast meats over rice which is actually very similar to lechon yeah. I mean, I would say, like like we said, focus on uh, adobo chicken and lumpia. I mean, I feel like that uh, there's so many dishes that Filipinos do have that if you just focus on maybe like the top six or seven and and kind of like blowing those up, I, I think there's a chance. You know, for me, I had to give up Andrew on Ting Pakukai, like the steamed chicken mushroom dish getting big, and like Huang Man Ji, the, mm. the, the, the dish from Jinan, you know, the chicken stew. Like, I can't even get other Chinese people to try it. Number two, Andrew, focus on branding, the background processes, as well as, you know, business systems and production systems. Number three, Andrew, focus on some small recipe tweaks that don't jeopardize the original soul of the recipe and also the Latino market. So for example, Andrew, some of the dishes, I'm not telling people what to do, could use less suka, which is the Filipino vinegar. I like synagogue a lot, but I'm just saying for like widespread consumption, that like sour meat thing, it could be throw some people off. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of crossover with Latino food where you have like the calamansi and then you might want to squeeze that on top of other things. I mean, I think that there's just little tweaks and tricks uh, to even make it appeal to even more of the Latino market, which is probably predisposed to a lot of the flavors in Filipino food because it is partially they Spanish. They use Sazon, right? Yeah. Number four, Andrew, um, I do not think that Filipino food needs to go through the same arc that Chinese food had where it was like, you know, driven by this community, that community. You can get cabbage-filled community uh, Chinese food in the white things and you get hood Chinese food with the bulletproof glass and like this and this. I actually don't think it's going to need to go through the same arc. I think if people focus on a universal branding, they can serve mostly lumpia, garlic rice, chicken adobo, hollow hollow and maybe some pandasol bread and that could be a chain that could have like 50 to 200 restaurants around america but they'd have to really brand it correctly where you could grab the filipino market filipino americans which is a pretty huge demographic only second to chinese americans but also grab a wide range of outside people as well to supplement the income Yo, I've actually had some really good Filipino cooked tacos before. And I feel like Filipinos, one thing that they're really, really good at, uh, if not, if, if it's not the traditional dishes that really gain traction, I think it's Filipino chefs putting their twist on a lot of different types of food, such as fried chicken or such as tacos or such as Chinese food. And I think it's good. It yeah. has really has a shot. I think take a look at El Pollo Loco's Arc, Torchy's Tacos. There's so many different chains of like ethnicities. And of course, yes, they did have to Americanize or Westernize to gain a certain thing. But look, hey, look at what Panda Express did. Yo, who's going to be the Filipino Panda Express? Like, I want to give it to Jollibee's, but Jollibee's doesn't serve enough traditional Filipino dishes, so you probably can't give them that award. But yo, who's who's gonna be the Filipino American Panda Express? Who's gonna do it? Who's gonna do it? Let us know in the comment section below what is your favorite Filipino dish? What is your favorite Filipino restaurant in your city? And what you would do to popularize Filipino cuisine in America because it deserves it. Because it's got some absolute bangers. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pop Boys. You know us, man. We'll talk about everything, including food. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button. Click subscribe. Turn on your notifications and leave your comment down below. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.